Battle Starfighter, and today we start dissecting the tactics of the Dicta Bolta and start applying them to the X-Wing Miniatures game. So I want to read the first rule to you as it was written by Oswald Bolta, and that is, try to secure advantages before attacking. If possible, keep the sun behind you. Now we all know that there is no sun in the X-Wing Miniatures game. There is no star that you can use as a game element in the game. But we do use obstacles. And for that reason, I'm going to rewrite the rule for X-Wing Miniatures, and it, it will now read this. During setup, place your obstacles and ships so you have the advantage. The whole point of rule number one is to secure advantages for yourself and for your ships and your list. So we're going to talk about the different obstacles in the first part of this, and I'm going to tell you what I think I would use these different obstacles for and how they can benefit you. The first one we're going to talk about are big rocks. Big rocks like these over here, these are the biggest rocks in the game, and these are the ones I prefer to use. And I think big rocks should be used if you're flying an ace list. Reason being is aces usually have huge action economy, usually move last, and can get around these a little bit easier because they have the double repositioning. For example, if you had someone like Jake over here on the rebel side, getting around these rocks is not super difficult and can use these as cover. You want to try to use these as cover and also try to force your opponent to go over them and get greedy going after big name pilots such as Luke Skywalker or Wedge Antilles. They're also really good for breaking up larger swarms. So if these over, so if you're going up against a uh, list over here and I was the rebel player, I would definitely want to make sure I have big rocks against a list like this because it will help break up the swarm because there's so much punishment for going over a rock. For those of you who don't know, going over a rock in X-Wing Miniatures, um, you roll a die and you take a hit or critical result if you roll it, and you also lose your action. And if, anyone who's, if you've ever met anyone who's played X-Wing Miniatures, actions are very important to the game. The next set of obstacles I want to talk about is debris fields. Now, debris fields, they're not as punishing as rocks, but they do still give you damage if you roll a crit and you get a stress token. However, some lists like to benefit off of stress tokens. For example, the list here on the right with the Admiral Sloan and the TIE Aggressors, when the opponent is stressed, they get re-rolls that benefit them. So having these on the board and hoping that when you are forcing your opponent to go over some of these debris fields and giving them stresses will help your list gain advantages. And when you're stressed, you're not allowed to take actions, so that even puts you in a better position on your end. So again, if I was flying this list over here, debris fields would be my preferred um, would be my preferred obstacle to take. The next one I want to talk about is gas clouds. Now, gas clouds, I think to me, are really great for swarms. If I was the Imperial player on this side and I was inexperienced, and say this was maybe my first, second, third game, and I kind of wanted to play it safe and I'm just trying to learn how to fly, I definitely would be taking these gas clouds. You do have to roll when you go over them, but you don't get any damage. What you do is instead you get a strain token, which reduces your agility until you are shot at or until you do a blue maneuver which relieves that uh, strain token but again you don't take too much damage from this you can receive damage if you get shot but if you're trying to run away you get away you still get the bonuses from this but also I like using these when I use three agility dice uh, ships for example like Jake or Arvel I wouldn't go through them if I if I had a three agility dice ship, but I would put them in between because when you roll your dice out, you can change one of your blank results to an evade. And to me, that's the really great part of this is you basically get a free evade, and when you're an A-wing or any other three agility dice ship, you're rolling four dice and you're able to convert a blank, if I roll the blank, uh, you're able to convert a blank into an evade. The other thing is, if you don't know this, is the X-Wing Miniatures game actually is designed to deal damage more than it is to deal evades. If you didn't know this already, you'll never forget this. The 
dice for defense only have three evade sides naturally, two focuses, and three blanks. The attack dice have three normal damage sides, one critical side, and two focus sides, and two blanks. So if you're being shot at through the debris cloud, you have a better chance of getting a blank result, which will allow you to flip that to a focus. So, or sorry, flip that to an evade. So when you are going, when you're being shot at through a debris, I would rather have, or through a cloud, I would rather have green dice because you have three blank sides and three evade sides. You have a better chance at, of converting into an evade based on how these dice are made. The last group I want to talk about is small rocks. Now, every, of the, every other one of these are pretty large in comparison. For example, the gas clouds, there's not too many small ones. They're all about, they're all about a, pretty much a medium to a big size. The big rocks are pretty big, and the debris clouds are pretty medium-sized. But rocks, uh, the asteroids, there's some small variants like the ones over here. And I would use these if you're flying big ships that really do suffer from going over obstacles. Like if you're flying a decimator, if you're flying a ghost, if you're flying, uh, what's another big ship, um, the, the jump master or a houndstooth, I would take smaller rocks so you don't run the risk of running them over. And because they're smaller, you can kind of cluster them in the corner. So if you pull out your rulers and you want to, put them all over here in a corner, um, you kind of clear that board away from that board away from you from you going over here and you you create a bigger board by using the rocks to take up less space because they're smaller. So I would use these for uh, large base ships. Now there's some other advantages you can gain from taking bigger obstacles or maybe taking clouds. For example, if I was flying Han Solo, I would want clouds because again, they're big and I can get closer to them and I don't lose my shot when I go over them. If I was a mining guild tie, I would take these asteroids because my mining guild ties ignore asteroids. I can just go right over them. Same thing with if I was taking uh, vulture droids with the uh, grapple with the struts, I would put them on the rocks, I have big rocks so they can park on them. So this is just a brief setup on what obstacles you can bring to amplify your success and your advantages in setup for the X-Wing Miniatures game. The next part we're going to discuss is how to set up your ships to ensure you have advantages. So each side has picked their debris and their obstacles for the game. The Rebel player has elected to take the three big rocks and the Imperial player has elected to take the debris fields. Now, when setting up for the game against a swarm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, go, I'm going to talk from the rebel player's perspective. If I see a swarm, my number one goal is to kill any lanes that can exist in the the center of the board. I don't know if any of you guys have played chess before, but if you control board center in chess, you, you have an advantage of winning the game. X-Wing kind of works the same way, that if you could control the center of the board, or if you can claim the center of the board and push your opponent outward toward the edges, you secure victory for the game because they'll be showing you their backsides or they'll be maneuvering away from you. So the whole goal is to secure the center of the board, and if you can prevent the swarm from going to the center of the board and controlling it, it helps you out immensely. So the way I say kill lanes is, if we bring out our rulers again, for setup, you see inside this box, there's really no way that a swarm can go straight down this way on you, and there's very few ways that it could come straight down on you this way. The only lane that you I can really see is the one right here, and maybe the one right here, but for an effective swarm to keep good spacing and keep cohesion, there's not a lot of room on this board unless they're going on the outsides to maintain their cohesion, therefore you could come in from the center and push them to the board, to the board edges. So let's talk about setup for swarms. That's one question I actually get a lot, and a lot of players are very frustrated, um, especially new Imperial players 
who are trying to play for the first time. They always want to fly tie swarms and usually an ace. So the advice I always tell them is proper spacing. Some of you have probably encountered this issue where you turn with a swarm and they start bumping into each other and you lose a bunch of actions and it's the first turn of engagement. The way you prevent that is you get your swarm and you space them out properly. One of my favorite spacings is windows and is going into the windows. So what windows means is you basically establish your front line and you put the ship in between the window, which you can see here, there's a window right here where the ship can fit through. This will give you an advantage if all of a sudden they decide to joust you. You can go one speed higher on this back row and you now can joust evenly. Also, when you turn, by the way the square works, they will not bump one another. So for example, I'll show you here with the five um, with the five specialists that when you start doing turns and I'm, I'm, I'm just doing this for the sake of showing you turning for them if you were to do bank turns if everyone did a two bank this would clear and everyone would be able to receive their action so let's just pretend that the rock uh, here is moved over here we're going to open space and just to, just to prove a point going with the red first you always want to start from the inside out to make sure this works so with this proper spacing as they move in if everyone did that maneuver you can see that there are no bumps and they all come in and can receive their action maintaining their squad cohesion by keeping that spacing. So you always want to leave about a ship base length in between each ship. So that way when they turn, they're able to keep their cohesion very much like this. Now, this also works for hard turns because you're keeping that spacing in the front and the back that when they do the hard turns, they will not bump into each other. As you can see, there's clearly enough space in between here that if these ships were to turn sideways, this space would minimize slightly, but you would not bump and you would still maintain your action, giving you the advantage with tokens. Now let's talk about the other side. Let's go over here to the rebel side. And with aces, setting up is a little bit more difficult. So we know that the Sinar uh, aggressors are gonna be over here. And they're in that corner. They all set up that twos. Uh, Fear Officer 3, so they're probably on the board somewhere here to help support it, let's say. And if you are the Rebel player, one thing you want to do is start trying to figure a way to control board center, like I said before. So, again, if we put that rock back there, again, if these specialists were to come into the board that we created earlier, they would run over right over these rocks and they would start taking damage and lose actions giving you an advantage. One thing I would like to do is probably get Luke up here and Wedge over here and use them to cover one another. Kind of like how we do with the with the swarm over here. I would probably put Wedge in the back because his defense is not as great as Luke because Luke has force tokens. But Wedge is a very powerful offensive piece, so I kind of would put him in a position where I can throw him in the front if I need him for offense, or I can throw Luke in the front for a more defensive push. Now, with the A-Wings, because they're fragile, but they have the speed, I would probably set them up in a way that they can do some sort of flanking maneuver. But I would still start them off in a similar position like this, and then split them apart. One thing you want to do in setup, in my opinion, is you don't want to show your hand too early. For example, even though my plan is to have the A-Wings go this way and around to hit the Sinars from the side, and then use Wedge and Luke as bait here to hit some damage and then come around and behind them and such, I don't want to show that in the beginning. I want to set them up here and then move them into that position so that way my opponent's kind of thrown off guard. Now there are also some other advantages of this as well. I know a lot of people have used Lone Wolf and have 
turned it off. For example, a lot of people, when they have Lone Wolf on the list, for example, let's say Wedge has Lone Wolf, they would like to start their ship all the way out away from their squad mates. To me, that's an ill-advised tactic because you're giving away too much of your list. You're putting one ship out here that when it's turning in to use these guys as support when you're baiting in this list, you've now moved close into the squadron, to your, the rest of your squadron, that now you've turned off your own lone wolf by doing this. So one thing I would like to do is actually start my ship off in the formation and then do something like move them out to the side here and then come around so that way I'm away from the squadron I'm and I can use my lone wolf and the only space for me to go to is more open space as opposed to towards my own squadron and thus turning off my lone wolf. So that's just an example with lone wolf because I know a lot of people are, get really get really excited to use that reroll so they want to start them off all by themselves. But actually starting them off with the group and then moving them out by themselves makes them more deadly because you're working with the grain of your ships as opposed to against the grain of your ships. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Rule 2 is on its way. This place crawls, and remember to always check your six.